of an American I would love man. One. You should be able to do whatever the fuck you want. God damn it. I'm in Sweden. And you're right in Texas. Now. You're an American man in Texas. <laughs> this is a, this is a free state, sir. <laughs> what do you have? We have whiskey. Oh, I would love one. That's what we need. All right, so Terrence Howard came back for round two on the Joe Rogan Experience. This time, Eric Weinstein joined them to help have a conversation about what he was getting right and what he was getting wrong. And right from the start, Weinstein really wanted to make sure that they stayed on track, and Rogan too, that they didn't get into ad hominem. Mm. Tell me what you think is right, and then you tell me what you think is right. Let's work this out. But this personal attack shit. If you're talking Let's start with the ideas because I think we all care about those. <laughs> yes, for sure. But hold, please, because uh, this is an important he, thing that he, just came He out. was so disingenuous because I sent him a long email after he sent me back the red line thing, thanking him for reviewing. He, his whole point was, I'm going to bring you on my show and we're going to talk. So right. here's the stuff that we're going to talk about that I would be, like to talk about. He never followed up from that point forward, just sent one line emails, any other thing you got you got to go to somebody else so he's pretended like oh i was trying to be you know very yeah so they're talking there about neil degrasse tyson and you know the assertion here is that because neil degrasse tyson wasn't willing to have terrence howard on to really have a serious conversation with him about his ideas but eric weinstein actually is more than willing to step up and participate because he has his own idea about the relationship between geometry and physics that's much better educated, right? He has a PhD, but that he believes he was passed over in terms of receiving a Nobel Prize for, for political reasons. So what we're going to see is that throughout this conversation, Weinstein keeps bringing it back around to his hobby horse, which is that academia is this absolutely awful, toxic shark tank where everyone is competitive, everyone wants to shoot everyone down, and that's why Terrence Howard got a lot of criticism. And, and, and the epidemic we have is assassins. We have an assassin epidemic because the midwits in the system, all they do is see things in terms of like Dunning-Kruger, Dunning-Kruger, Dunning-Kruger. The funny part about it is, is that that's the midwits end point, is that they see heterodox thinkers and they can't figure out how to place them and so they just say, if I can find one error, I can reject everything. And you keep triggering that, and that's With why you are one times one. But that's why I keep saying the one times one is more of a it's metaphor. It's not a metaphor to us. It, it is it, life and death. So did we really get anywhere? Was there more clarity? I'll let you be the judge. So you say this thing about hydrogen 40.5? Well, no, Perks. I wasn't wait, wait, saying. Wait, 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 uh, no, no, wait a second. But I wasn't saying that hydrogen is forty point five. I was saying that the key of E is forty point five hertz and doubles to one sixty two. Those things. Yeah, but you said but it you in move, a very authoritative I, way. And the one, you, and the forty point five is not forty point five hertz. It's forty point five megahertz associated not with hydrogen but with mercury. But you have an to orchestra. Keep. It's only the orchestral aspect of Western music and the need for even temperament that forces us all to listen to the concert master as to what a 440 is right okay joseph goebbels pushed that around the world okay let's not do joseph goebbels <laughs> just keep drinking <laughs> drinking whiskey um what you have so here's the main thing i want you to take away from this this is the role that joe rogan plays right now on the cultural stage I don't think he came looking for it. I don't think he knows really that he's playing this role. I don't think it's deliberate or part of any kind of plot or conspiracy. But the role that he plays because of how our digital media ecosystem has evolved is that he is the platform through which people who before would never have had an audience now in this time that we live in have access to millions of eyeballs, millions of ears, people who are going to really take them seriously, even though they are crackpots. They may be charismatic, they may be renegades, they may be likable, they may be eloquent, but they're crackpots. They fly in the face of the scientific consensus. What does that mean? It doesn't mean they're just free thinkers. It means they are outside of what we know to be true to the best of our ability following scientific method. And they claim to be proponents of science. They claim to be the next Galileo. They claim to be the big whistleblower who is exposing what's really going on in our corrupt institutions. This is the real problem. The problem is not Fauci. The problem is not the academic system. The problem is not wokeness. 
It's the fact that we live in a digital ecosystem in which the zeitgeist has more and more and more gotten deranged, confused. The waters have been muddied to the extent that we think that someone like Terence Howard is sort of just the other side of the coin in an equally valid set of assertions about the nature of reality as say a Neil deGrasse Tyson, for example, right? In which Anthony Fauci and RFK Jr. or Robert Malone are, well, you know, two equal sides and what, which one you think might be true is more sort of a matter of taste or political orientation. That's the real problem.